交通レシーバー必要な方いらっしゃれば受付にあのお取りくださいお願いします
方のオフが。あの あ、あ、すいませんね。今5分押しでスタートしようと思ってます。YouTube配信の方の試しをしたりしていますので、少々お待ちください。岡本さんとの連絡調査お願いします。Hello, people watching through us with the YouTube and those who have participating. This is the Future Ideation Camp Volume One. Now we have suddenly started our YouTube program, and from here on, uh, this is going to be a keynote, and we're having many participants. So this is going to be distributed through the YouTube, Japanese, and English. And my name is Hirota from Tokyo Metropolitan Foundation for History and Culture. For those who are watching us through the YouTube, I have some something to say. First of all, the CCBT is a hub where public can explore creative imaginations in society through the use of digital technology. Last year, October 23rd, was our Foundation Day. And today, the keynote will be performed by the C This is one of the core program of CCBT, one of the program of the Future Ideation Camp. The Future Ideation Camp to speak of, using the digital technology, various people are to be invited, and those people will be in having the expertise of various area, and this is a program to work on societal needs. This time is the number one, volume one. And we are going through the concentrated camp for five days, and this is our very first day, day one. Uh, this keynote is going to be the second one. The first one was a talk by Mr. John Maeda uh, that was performed on Zoom. Today, we're going to be discussing about uh, the computational design. Uh, the, this is going to be performed by Mr. Toyoda Keisuke and Ms. Seo Hyojoan. So let me introduce you. Today's online program, we have a URL different from the English one and the Japanese one. Therefore, according to your setting or the preferred language, please change the URL. And the keynote lecture is under the title Media, Art, History, Education, and Future and Individual Perspective. From the facilitation, the camp director, Hagibara-san and Hayashi-san, will be your moderators. So, 
The floor is yours. This is Han Yashi. This is Akibara. Thank you so much for having us. So, Miss Hello, uh, Miss Seo, hello. And welcome in Tokyo and CCPT. I'm learning Korean language because I prefer the language. And I try to really salute her in South Korean language. But Ms. Seo is very fluent in Japanese. She probably doesn't have any problem for the language in Japanese, and she is a media artist. And now, you know, these days, within the uh, digital creativity, she has been introducing many art in many formats. And this is Professor Keisuke Toyoda. He is working for computational design and leveraging on the architect and designing. So uh, Toyota-san is working for various things, creating many things in various fronts. So this is going to be highly expected. I think we're all going to be having a great, interesting talk. So without ado, uh, let's start from Toyota-san's presentation. Please. Can you see my material? So, hello everybody and hello Ms. Seo-san. My name is Toyota. So today, I am here at CCBT, Civic Creative Base. This is where I am. And maybe I'm not a position of a very creative person, but then I'm a constructor architecture. And from this position, I would like to speak today. So I design the architects mainly. However, right now, I am working as a special professor at the Institute of Industrial Science, the University of Tokyo. So I do research and the implementation half-half. I am running the Norris Architect uh, Office. And this is mainly working for the architect and using digital technology, how the architect is going to be changing the implementation and as such uh, research is done by noise. And when building constructions, we use BIM and CAD usually. However, it's really closed with the objective of uh, erecting a building. It's just a tool for construction. However, the building data, I think there's none that is stored. But let's think that all these data could be used for robotics and others, not just for the sake of designing the uh, building. So we thought that construction data could be used more. Therefore, the data used for construction and the data otherwise that could be used, meaning that the architect could be uh, making a bridge between a society in a different way. Let's say architect office is now starting to go out in the society, and I would like to share some cases. This is 2025. Uh, Osaka is now inviting the expo in 2025. And at the bidding, I was working for the art director and architect director in order to invite expo coming. And this is a pavilion, Ochiai, and I've been working for the construction of the pavilion. As you can see, it has a box cell. So we have 1, 2, 4, 16, 32. So uh, by doubles, it's creating somewhat like a Minecraft. Within the virtual world, you can create your own topic and bring it over to this cell. And then when you accumulate the cells, there's various uh, communications done by many people with various cells and various thoughts. And this cell can move around and reflect the reflects and you can see whether the uh, reality is distorting or whether it is distorting in another way. So 
illusion people will be thinking? Is it going to be the real illusion or is it not an illusion in reality? In that way, uh, the world is going to be fused in, blended in within the physical and digital. And that is the experiment that I've been working for this pavilion. For instance, this is in Kabutocho. This is in the right of the heart of the Tokyo Financial District within the building called Kabuto One, and it's an installation. And I think you already know this is created along with the cooperation with the rhizomat- rhizomatics. And this rotates, it's a six meter times four meter times four meter cube, and it's hinged from the ceiling and it rotates around. And when it rotates, it's located in Kabuto Cho. So the stock information real time is going to be reflected onto the format and then visualized by radio rhizomatics. They were in charge of the uh, display and we ourselves were in charge of the form and design. When things are gigantic and it's floating within the air, uh, people instantly or instinctively feel fear and power and are instinctive up. Uh, objective is that we wanted to uh, exert our positions to uh, the we didn't want to be inferior to rhizomatics by the way we're very good friends but anyhow uh, the power that is instilled plus uh, the display could have a good synergy in order to uh, send out people message using digital technology There's a lot of collaboration opportunities, and it's not necessary that uh, media artists or digitalists that we combine work with. And you might know Mr. Kinyahara. He's a graphic designer, and he's a very minimum artist. He has a very minimal design, and this is using an underground parking lot within a museum. And Hara-san... His worldview uh, with a sense of tightness and sense of uh, mm, sense of his sense, we had to create this digitally. And this parking lot was very old, 53 years old indeed. And the very accurate design of Hara-san should be reflected into digitalized way. And... It's not digital itself, so there's a, a physical a physical uh, substance here already, and we're using this parking lot, and people can walk around to experience the speed of walkers or um, experience the wall, uh, speed of the cars working, and then the sunlight, sunlight coming in as a ray could be uh, creating some different views. And you might know about the effect called Moire effect. So overlaying this Moire effect, the passive dynamic is going to be amplifying your feeling and sensing. So with three layers of patterns, each pattern is created on a wooden block, and that starts moving to create the effect. And sorry, I got rid of the footage um, by mistake. So when it happens, you know, with a passive movement, this movement can be uh, proliferated and it's not used as a display, but uh, uh, for scanning process, um, it requires such a high accuracy. So we use a laser scanner and uh, so with a zero point some, you know, millimeters levels, and uh, all the positioning is very located uh, precisely. And so that has developed uh, remotely. And so and so it, this can be reproduced uh, no matter who does. And so as a process, it's ensured. So this is uh, an architect, but uh, what actually happens in on the field, uh, on site, is uh, different. So this is more um, of an experience generation. 
and uh, this is a new slide, and uh, sorry for interpreters. Anyway, so this is a tatami that we developed, the Orono tatami. So we are talking about, I'm talking about focusing on the borderline of the digital and physical. So that's why I have decided to insert this slide and the uh, tatami mat. You know, it's a traditional floor mat. And normally it's a rectangular one to two ratio. And if we are to do it, and we can only lay it in uh, just a spacious area, so like uh, with the pillars, like this venue, and uh, it wouldn't work. But you know, we can scan on three dimensionally. So this is generatively, if we can, you know, generate those different patterns, and it doesn't have to be rectangular. So, and they can be generative and adaptive. And so this pattern is very appropriate. So when we inserted that, you know, so be utilizing a digital technology and by scanning, in the past, uh, those, uh, you know, craftsmanship needed to work on site, but uh, it can be done uh, digitally and it can be sent anywhere around the world. And uh, those uh, um, the artisans, there are only the 220 of them in Japan, so they're endangered species in a way. So by, by doing so, they can be more proud with their work and a digital technology can be utilized and it can be cool and the market can be expanded more globally. And so they might have a high chance of a younger generation entering. And so it is generated uh, with this uh, the, the type of grass and uh, so that it, uh, that with uh, this is, uh, the junkas or rush in uh, from Japan, and uh, so you know by utilizing this pattern, uh, you know it the direction doesn't matter anymore, and uh, so this pattern can be further uh, augmented, so the materials uniqueness uh, can be utilized even more by combining with the digital technology. So that's what I'm trying in out. So oh, here is the footage or video I was talking about. I just inserted uh, just before this um, um, event started. So depending on uh, season and depending on the people's movement, you know, there's nothing kinetic embedded here, but to be able to materialize this effect and pattern. So as a not as a phenotype, but the digital technologies is utilized abundantly. And so humans misunderstanding and those are factors uh, I believe uh, applying some chemical calculations and from uh, designing to the implementation, um, you know, for that part, the digital technology is utilized and applied. And this is an example with the Bao Bao. I think you know the brand. So, you know, they sell bags of uh, triangular shapes. And I was asked to work on a small display. This is a small place in Ginza uh, seven or eight years ago. And uh, abruptly, um, the Bao Bao side asked me to use this, uh, you know, um, soft LED display, and I didn't like it because uh, the resolution's not so good, and the colors not bright, and and uh, the resolution was just right with a, a Bao Bao logo. So I have written uh, this uh, program that it moves automatically. And also, we, I have inserted the fans on the bottom, and it blows air at the random timings. And so that is a physical phenomena. And the Bao Bao logo, is a, this is a digital data. Uh, but uh, so by combining those two at the uh, wind blowing um, timing, and then I have liaised with a uh, digital uh, image that uh, the Bao Bao logo is blown away. So there are no causal you know, effects and relationship, but um, it uh, provides uh, some kind of a haptic element. It provides uh, some texture to it. So it is a um, combination of a physical and digital and so by combining our expectations, 
uh, of what we have. And uh, so the resolution is very limited, but uh, something indigenous can be uh, derived here and expressed here. That's what I tried here. And there are so many other projects I want to introduce. So this is another one. Um, what's your background? What's the audience's background? Media artist, are you? Well, some students are learning media art, and also some others are some art-related people, and also some are researching accessibility, and some housewives. So some people who are interested in expressing themselves utilizing computers, I see. So I am an architect, and I started working with the media people and with the Tokyo University of Art at the AMC, and there's a person called Joe Kazuhiro, and I was invited to be there. And then so I was using Grasshopper, and he asked me to teach him. And uh, like a Takao-san and Fukuhara-san, Shiho-san, and so those people are working there. And that's when I realized how interesting this field is, and I started collaborating. So now, and I've been working with Joe quite often, and this for this project, you know, so trying to engage in a dialogue with the sound and architecture. So over 10 years ago, we worked on this, and we used to use a Max MSP, and then for visual coding, you know, it's a, beginning age and in the architect field you know we are a little bit behind like a 10 years behind the media and uh, we used to use a media the visual coding um, software called the program called the grasshopper and I was using that and um, max MSB you know treating as a data and also the grasshopper it's a more um, um, so we could, we decided we could swap the data. And so with uh, some certain algorithm, we got the feeding, and then so it provides patterns. And then this is uh, public art. So for processing those uh, complex uh, com complexity, and this is um, more of a primitive version of what we currently have. And uh, so those patterns would uh, change uh, all autonomously and they were through a certain route and it comes uh, back with the sound to the city. And uh, so architecturally, the, this, um, um, the window opens and uh, with a digital platform, they started engaged in a dialogue. And uh, so, and then uh, that's what uh, this, it happened. So that's, uh, the sound part cannot be achieved with an architecture and uh, behind the scene, we do something really wasteful. But Taiwan is extremely important, uh, in interesting. When th there is a public project, like 1% uh, of that uh, project needs to be spent on um, this, um, and so if there is, uh, let's say, the 10 billion yen project, then, then so 100 million yen needs uh, to be spent on this. Uh, so, but it's a very cumbersome process to apply for that, and we've been sued to twice or so. So as an architect uh, office, that uh, we have to take care of some areas of uh, providing guarantee and so on for two years. Uh, which we normally don't do, but uh, it expands our field as well, and we can collaborate with the uh, Joe Sun, with the YYXD, and with the Kinetic Art Group. We worked with them, so we collaborated, and it was extremely important uh, and interesting. So now my talk is expanding. Uh, so digital data in construction, as I have already shared, uh, with the coordination with various people, the com digital communications and digital programming and going beyond the boundary, once they become a way of communication, now uh, the communication starts to be translatable. 
So currently, uh, that was what I have been talking about. And this is something that uh, only architect could do. And I'm working on other things too. About we're working on other things too. But since I am doing every various thing, I am now forgotten as an architect. So current, if you would like to uh, build a house for yourselves, uh, please call me. I'm an architect designer. And so uh, this is a, v a residence created in uh, Setagaya Ward, and this is a low-cost house. But although it is low house, this is a very comfortable house created, and that's a precondition of designing the house. But then in behind, we created this housing with all of the construction and design being able to be stored and to be used. So as mentioned, usually the constructions are designed on BIM and CAD. It's not necessarily limited to uh, construction, but this BIM is used for other uh, designing tools too. And CAD is just um, a designing tool. Uh, so construction, the BIM, the building information modeling is much more frequently used this day. So you have the XYZ world, the three dimension world. So it's just about form and construction needs to be managed by time. And you have to uh, cost uh, manage and you have to think about the equipment and you've got to think about the materials and the serial numbers of the materials, etc. So uh, the high dimensional information is used with various uh, layers. And when construction is going on, we use about 100 dimension in information. And this is controlled by BIM, B-I-M. And BIM is very, very high, highly uh, grade uh, tool. However, it's closed in uses for the construction. So it will be writing the uh, note on the design of the construction. Let's say if there's a beam data for this building, you see the pillar will be connected from the ground uh, minus two ground floor to the very high top. Or else maybe you might think about the thickness of the pillar and you might understand what kind of a, a pillar was created, what material is created. And you know about the duct and uh, the, about the piping within the very ceiling end. And it's very important for construction. However, if people would like to run robotics, you just want to know the uh, floor information. You don't need any duct information there for if the construction data used for other information, other usage, otherwise than uh, maintenance, then you would like to cleanse or clean the data because you don't need it if you're using the data for sake of running the uh, robotics within this area. So anything that is wanted, it takes like Ooh, three seconds to scroll a display. And we just got an ideation of let's create a construction by using game ex data exchange. And you know about the optical simulations. And this is going to be much more accurate, but game engine. Game engine is not that accurate and making it easier for us to use, but it is uh, Satisfyingly accurate, therefore, the simulation of the form is very nicely done by Game Engine, and the uh, combination of material is also been used. And if you can use the head mount, the scale, the feel, and then the depth of the space will be very accurate. So people who don't know about the construction at all will understand such information at first hand. So when we work on construction like this, but we get voices that, oh, your design really turned out, the construction really turned out as you have designed. So uh, this, using this game engine is very understandable. So BIM is already good. However, if we use the game engine, let's say we bring it to Fortnite, and then let's say that uh, we could play tonight with Fortnite with everybody within the same uh, environment, and that could be done immediately if we work on the head engine, so long as we do the calibration. So the AR let us do the zombie game too, and we can uh, go and play a game for looking for the good and the treasures. And then you can see and do the one-on-one uh, -on -one battle. 
So if the, uh, you're living in a tower man, uh, con condominium, you can just order a food delivery by uh, using your data, and then uh, your food will be delivered. Therefore, after the architecture, the building is completed, then the building is going to be living, living on, and that data is to be used by using the game engine. We are doing such research as if that could be possible. And now I use the word common ground. And since I started working on common ground, now I'm working for the university as well, meaning that urban cities Urban cities are now within the environment that we human beings and non-human beings should be living together. And our research topic is, it, and the implementation that we are working on is the co-symbiosis with human and non-humans. When we say about common ground, people say, what is that? But roughly said, it is about, let's say the reality should be written in game engine, but not only that, have a sensor and actuators embedded within the building and the data should be shared with various multiple person and the computation and the reading experience will be used easily. So this is how I explain. Let's say the uh, physical digital is on the uh, horizontal and the vertical is environment and agent. And there's physical and the digital world. Until the 20th centuries, we were just li living in the physical world, the left-hand side. And so physical robotics or physical people, animals or physical goods were there. And so constructions in urban cities were all within the physical realm. The world was moving with the physicality, but now we're in a new age and now COVID-19 happened and after that, we're living in a digital age. This is the right-hand side top, and these days we're saying that this is a non-human area. NP, NPC, non-player character, that's a word from the uh, gaming industry. So we mimic and use this uh, theory. So other than humans, there's some who are active it's, it's not human, once again, so it could be in robotics, but it could be also a delivery mobility, but working autonomously within the world. It could be VR characters or avatars as well. So until virtual to physicality is there, and then uh, avatar is, so autonomous and non-autonomous is also there too. So with that, the world could be researched a lot, and there's a lot of non-human agent coming. And as you know, the non-human agents, uh, there's some differences. We, you, we call them NHA, non-human agents, and they don't really understand the physicalities. So they slam or use AR cloud. We have to be prepared beforehand so that real-time scan and the recognition that they are difficult to do is to be performed well. So within the right-hand side, the digital environment, we can call it digital twin, and this is slam and AR cloud. So the digital environment that is shown on the right-hand side, the real-time production and the creation is very difficult. Therefore, we like to be prepared beforehand so that digital agent will be understanding the real world because they can read the environment digi di digital codes. But once we have some tables and chairs for the digital people, uh, they will be able to act on uh, such information. And then uh, they will start. Uh, so what really is that they are trying to make the communications, however, not being able to perform full communications. However, digital communications, according to industries or according to any world, the way of wording, phrasing is very different. Therefore, it, it does not have an interoperability. Uh, therefore, Company A and Company B, let's say, will not be able to share the data. A company, Robotics, will not be able to 
read the company B's robotics. Therefore, the robotics could collide to each other. Therefore, the rule could be defined like Parko in Shibuya or within Roppongi. Mori building could have a rule or a wording that people can start sharing the digital data. So then once the Lopongi building will be created, everybody could have a same digital twin using the same defined rule and then to uh, put in the cost, feed in the cost in order to improve uh, the uh, digitalization system. And then as long as uh, Mori building is going to be doing the maintenance, we don't have to up date the environment and everybody is always distributing the data mashing up so that's all the good things that we can think of so that's what we are working on as a common ground it could be bim or cad or plateau is a hot topic as well so it could be anything so as long as it's a digital uh, technology but uh, it needs to be kinetic. The BIM and CAD and Plato that GIS used for that is uh, there all uh, the, um, the s it's not useful, it's not dynamic. So it needs to be dynamic and it needs to continue to um, update. And on the online basis, it needs to uh, be able to cope with it. So this is a characteristics of a game engine. So this provides much value. And so, so cognitive space for NHA. So for NHA, the, the how difficult is it? How you know it, it's the recognized uh, spaces? So let's say for barrier free for those with uh, some physical restrictions, they're trying to develop uh, some kind of uh, the slope for them and so on. But uh, so we believe we it should be expanded to a non-human agent. So it needs to secure the accessibility. And uh, so it's, it, um, you know, usable classroom and buildings, and that's going to be a um, very important concept for the human and by the human and by the human. So with the uh, Gettysburg speech, it was uh, forefront. The, but then now it's too narrow of the people, by the people, for the people. I can't remember the order, but of, for, by. Um, so it should be all for non-human agent, and that enhances the fluidity as a society, and it provides a better uh, options. So this is not just a uh, technical. This is uh, this can also be the social and ethical and gender. You know, it's not making a good advancement in Japan, but in a past uh, a few decades ago, you know, there used to be two colors for uh, male and female, and uh, there used to be, there never used to be a gradation in the middle, so there used to be two different colors, but now there are some uh, more gradation colors in between, and then those uh, positions, uh, you know, it depends on the person where they position themselves, and uh, that's becoming a norm of the um, world. But um, this is is not uh, just a within uh, a gradation within the male or female. So it's uh, starting to expand out in the outer world. And for let's say there's a robot, robot, and if uh, it gives uh, 40 percent of um, the human rights, and uh, so it provides some kind of avatar attending an international conference and uh, providing some kind of uh, social activities, and uh, so provide that right. So, so. That might be a right you know, of this uh, virtual avatar to have uh, uh, some readable um, writings on the blackboard and so on. So in the past, this used to be just uh, within the human body, but now expanding outside the uh, world. And we need to recognize that for, for to grant uh, human rights. And the Cafe Don in the Nihonbashi, that's where uh, through uh, avatar robots for socially and uh, physically, you know, if uh, they cannot go out and uh, they will be able to contribute for the society through that cafe and uh, I, you might have been there. And so it, that's happening in various aspects. And uh, so and uh, for the Cafe Don, it needs to be done there, but uh, providing that kind of environment 
uh, something like a common ground would be required. So that is the basic approach and the basic concept. So uh, let me talk a little bit more about the technical aspect. So when it comes to a question of what's common ground, and this is explained in a temporal scale, and uh, so the spatial scales. So in the, when we think of a digital space, and the temporal scale is very important. And the right to left, it's uh, nanometers, the kilometers. Uh, so this is uh, spatial. And the top to bottom, it's a millis milliseconds to century. So this is the temporal scale. And yesterday, there was a Plato Award. Uh, some of you might have uh, participated. Have you heard of Plato? Uh, the MLIT is focusing on those cities in Japan, and they are providing special data of those areas and for us to use. And so the government is pro started providing that. And uh, those are special data, you know, Google Earth and S and those are plateau and scan data. And so there are various uh, data available. Um, but there's nothing unified under the same s uh, specifications. And the Google Earth is offered by Google, a private company. And the, but the government is providing under Plateau. And so 50 locations in Japan and uh, 30 will be added. And Plateau, it's a product's name. Behind the scene, it's, there's a, the GIS uh, is used. And this is similar to Plateau, but the KML, which can be used as like a Google Earth, will be available. So, so within this family, there are lots of different specifications and standards, and they are all different. And the GIS, and so it's a geographical information. So it provides, you know, kilometers to that are some tens of centimeters levels, and so realistically thinking, that's. Uh, the scope and it doesn't provide any responses in terms of the temporal scales. You know, basically, it is used in the long term and as a database, as a frame. So, as a in terms of uh, the dis description system and for beam and CAD for architecture. So, of course, it provides um, uh, down to the 0 point some millimeters levels. And then description is not updated on a, on a shorter time span, but the beam is different. This is a high level data model. So the attribute is abundant with an attributes uh, data. So for the point cloud and the scanning is in fashion for beam and GIS. And so it needs to be prepared by human hands, but uh, with the thing, and then it, uh, it can be just scanned. And uh, so it's uh, parks and roads, no one are designed, so there's no data. But to get the data, you need to scan. So scanning is very useful. And so you can scan this venue as well. But scan data is a tengun. So, so which part is a part of wall? Which part is a part of a floor or a desk? It's a difficult to make that judgment because there is a challenge of a frame. So making that kind of judgment is required. Otherwise, the data becomes extremely heavy and it cannot be promised, processed. And um, And uh, so because it's a point cloud, so well, so providing descriptions and, you know, the government is proposing. And so as we think further, there are, you know, depending on the scale, the, some, when we say digital twins, some people might think as long as it provides a digital description, that should be fine. But uh, am I talking too fast? <laughs> So let's say if you want to run a robot or if you want to do AR in the city and with a plateau, you know, some people might think with a plateau, we can do it, but we can do a lot of things with plateau. However, 
like uh, this, uh, the gap of one centimeter that needs to be recognized by the automobile, and we can't use the plateau for that. And and so with the, uh, those, those are temporal scales as well. And so those all need to be well recognized, and it needs to um, provide uh, interoperabilities or compatibilities. Otherwise, uh, not everyone can use it. So and that's what uh, we are working on. So those are gray shaded areas. So this is the scale of a human um, using in terms of space and time. And uh, it's it's a very limited in this uh, uh, area. It's uh, so it's not realistic. So, but the game engine is right in the middle. So the human's recognition and the communication can be facilitated, and uh, so that's how it's uh, developed. So that's why the game engine and uh, is uh, existing in the middle. But uh, unfortunately, it's virtual. So in the physical physical field, you know, the game engine should be usable. And then, so, but the sensor, they don't, the game engine doesn't have sensors. So the, we need to provide some kind of uh, um, those senses in the real world. And so the, then the game engine can uh, conduct the sensing on its own. So once combined that way, the, it can be, um, accessible without have human having to set it in individually. So well, that's what common ground. So it's readable to everyone. It should be interactive. And uh, let's say robots are very expensive at the moment and uh, because it requires riders and sensors and cameras. So for processing, you know, com computers required and a battery and also, you know, telecommunications need to be secured. So it just turns out to be a few million yen. But uh, you want to buy it for a few hundreds of thousands of yen with aligners, you know, it just uh, ends up being expensive. So let's say there are 100 robots, um, you know, if we want 100 robots here, and then if all of them have writers and computers, and if they just to communicate, or the, then we put, put, we should put those 10 writers in this venue, and as the 100 robots can be just to, uh, be here, and they're trying to crack a watermelon or play a game. And so that would be a better uh, environment, and it's much more efficient. So that's what we are trying to do as a common ground. So the virtual avatar today, uh, maybe we can see over there through hit mount. However, uh, the remote personnel who is just in front of me, she doesn't have a camera before her. Therefore, uh, theoretically, she cannot see me, me real time. We're not on an equivalent foothold. And the modality channel, uh, the number of the channel is very limited uh, to that, uh, the environment. If the environment is already being able to be read by everybody and the human agent and the human beings uh, can be reading the description all at once within the environment, the virtual grandma and myself, uh, the robot that I am in, uh, the uh, environment itself will understand the uh, position and the location. Uh, the grandma uh, will be able to see myself moving and that's the environmental assistance. In such a versatile world, if that is realized, uh, the communications and the way of living for the human beings, how it's going to be changing in, is my research. I'll skip several uh, slides. And this is uh, the uh, we have been making a presentation at Paris to to bid for Osaka to invite the Expo over there. And now we have been winning over the bid to bring the Expo to Osaka 2025. What we were doing is that uh, we were assuming that uh, the urban cities are going to be dispersed, non-centralized. And how are we going to be using the location of the Expo venue in order to have that theory or concept be used within the next Expo? So with the half a month, 
a half a year, I was able to receive a very valuable experience in order to create a hypothetical urban city. And that kind of an experience is hard to gain. Uh, for this time, the Japanese Expo for the Next Generation Techniques and Know-Hows, in order to so this is going to be a great opportunity for us to be able to uh, secure the, us to transition into the next generation. And we have to understand the cyber uh, digitalization. And if we don't grasp that opportunity, we will not be able to uh, smoothly go into the next generation. Smart city is just only connecting the data. And it seems to be uh, looked down. However, this is all about a versatile way in order to be able to use by everybody according to scales and according to industries, there could be a various scale in various way. And to the tech-centric idea, right now green-centric and human-centric is now shifting uh, as a green, company, a green urban city. So uh, the urban going forward is no longer tech-centered, a human and uh, the tech uh, environment green-centered. However, some people will be criticizing that this is a greenwash. There is no right or wrong answers, but not only being human-centric, but we have to be augmenting the human power and maybe allow the NHAs, the agents to have a human type of uh, the human rights. So thinking about the urban city to be augmented and expanded, in the very end, there could be a possibility that human beings will have wider selectivity, the wider option, the wider way of living. And that's my question for everybody. And I would like to end here. Thank you very much. So we heard a lot of interesting issues. And for questions, maybe I will put it for later. So first, we would like to listen to Ms. Seo. So this is Ms. Seo Hijum. And the floor is yours for your presentation. Hello. How do you do? My name is Seo Hyojung. I work as a professor of Samsung Art and Design Institute. So now I'm invited to CCBT, and CCBT is now open for workshops and talks, and I'm very happy to be here on the very first day. I will try to speak up in Japanese as much as possible. So first of all, I would like to start off why I'm sitting here. Why am I privileged to be here today? I've never been living in Japan, and I've never studied Japanese language, but there's a reason that I can speak the language. When I used to be junior high schooler, that's in 1980s, and at that time, uh, South Korea was not open to Japanese culture. However, friend's father, oh, he has been over to a business trip in Japan, and he's brought back uh, the shonen tai uh, cassette deck, music deck. And that was very appealing to me because the uh, Shonen Tai uh, group chorus was singing about a sentiment that was very near to us, however, using a different word. And the magazines like Non Non, uh, those Japanese type of magazines were also sold in South Korea. So looking at those, going through those magazines and listening to the cassette tape, we were going through the Japanese culture. However, in 1984, Namjoon Pipe in satellite, he has been connecting the world. That was Mr. Orwell installation. And using that opportunity, Seoul, New York, Tokyo, London was connected within the January, the first day of January. And at to that, at Tokyo, uh, the MC was done by uh, Kuro Tetsuko Yudu, uh, Kuroyanagi. And Chonetai was also making a debut making their standing there. And I thought it was very cool. And when we go to the Chinese amb amb embassy, we can 
we are still not allowed to look into Japanese culture. However, or when we go to the black market, we are able to see the videotapes of Japan. Uh, maybe you might not know about the videotapes anymore because you're young. But then when I was uh, growing up and when I w used to be a gi in the 1980s, I was able to go through that VHS. That was my generation. So there was a BS broadcasting by NHK, and there was a. I was looking at Iwai Toshio's uh, program through that, or else I was also following other people's creativity, and I wanted to become a media artist. And at the time of concert, uh, there was a, a workshop that re was related to media art. And then uh, at that time, ticket was very expensive, but I was able to take part within that workshop. And by talking and communicating with everybody, I was able to naturally learn the language Suma Suma, that's a Japanese program. Program, And I learned my Japanese from those programs, but uh, please do understand my language came from those programs, casual language. And I've been working as an artist in Japan as well, I would like to introduce my word work. This is created in 2005 art piece. This is, uh, have you ever heard of a ice factory in Shimoda? And this building itself is working like a refrigerator or a cooler, and you might not be able to see clearly, but there's a box created in a steel, and when you pour water within the steel, and when the seawater is poured in, uh, the you can create the, the ice and that's the function of the building however people do not fish anymore and people started not using this area and so they wanted to demolish the area they wanted to create a parking shop here however the south korean and the japanese artists got together to support so not breaking down this facility and for the very first time when I came over here, I was able to experience the Japanese type of a hotelier, which was full of molds, and I experienced onsen spa as well. Here, I was trying to come up with a concept in order to delay time and create and steel box and projection mapping was formed. So when people go into the steel box, then the timing will be delayed. That was the art piece. In 2006, there was Ogaki Biennale. And the time, the topic was the power of luck. And when thinking of luck, what I thought was about a prince's story. And, well, the princess always becomes happy at the very end. And when I think of princess, that was about Snow White. I created an art piece that the Snow White could be living various lives. So by setting up some dolls, you can just try to change the lives of Snow White. Snow White could have uh, eaten the apple, the poisonous apple, and she could have been dead. She could have been coinciding the prince beforehand. So by interactively, uh, the story could have been changed. And this is the most liked story by myself. Snow White is killed on her way of journey. So the story was created by the interactive way people participant will be moving the dolls like and then you can just move by shades and the shades will be indicating and making some story which was not never existent within the former story so when uh, this shade comes near Snow White, then the story was expanded. This is 2007. So at the Coben Biennale as well, at the fashion pavilion, and with the sound technology and from various areas, you know, we came together uh, to uh, generate or to present a new entertainment fashion show. And uh, in Korea, I teach as well. So my students came up with those costumes, and then we hang them. And the dancer would come and dance. And so this, uh, the footage was uh, shown. In 2011, as you know, that after the 311, 
March 11th, the SIGA contacted me and uh, so requested me to use uh, a make an art piece under the theme of water. And in Biwako Lake, there's a huge lake in SIGA Prefecture. It is a big lake. And I went there and to realize that it's bigger than the city of Seoul. And when I saw that, the in the galleries, uh, the water flown, and that was the scene. I came up with my idea, so I decided to create that. And uh, with this uh, footage and uh, this uh, projection mapping, you know, I became interested in projection mapping. So the water flow uh, was expressed with that method and uh, installed. And the biggest challenge here was that originally, you know, I couldn't work on 3D and uh, and I didn't uh, stay in Japan for so long. So on a paper basis, I checked what it's going to look like in Seoul. And then I came to Japan and uh, with the volunteers um, attended. And so I challenged to build this in the four meters. And I didn't know anything, so I tried this. But I don't think I would have done this now. But uh, there were two exhibitions and every after this, and every time I wondered why I had to do it, and I continued to regret it. And after three times, I decided not to do it anymore. <laughs> in 2012, in Kitakyushu, So instead of uh, uh, artists uh, uh, making art pieces, but uh, instead, so they just uh, prepare materials, and then so the uh, participants on the workshop would uh, create their art pieces. And what I was interested is a storytelling, and I like the word monogatari, and I've realized later on that it means that to tell a story. But the, my interpretation was that the objects would uh, tell a story. So I thought that the Kitakyushu is an origin of uh, various uh, objects. So I thought it would be interesting to have a museum to uh, exhibit those. And uh, so those will be um, recorded as a, a memoir, as a history, but um, when someone older deceased, and then so they disappear. So I wanted to um, preserve all of those using media. So we have presented what's at home, and um, and so the participants contacted their you know grandparents or the uncle and aunts to ask what they are, and based on that we developed the art pieces. And uh, I was very aware of objects watching. Uh, so I have attached a small camera and I showed what it looks like from those objects' point of view. And uh, in a workshop, uh, there's a uh, there's a department store of a brand Wako, and so that hasn't been used. So we have developed a, a, like um, a space like a museum. So some are brought by participants, and then some are. Uh, brought by me, and uh, we made sure to uh, display all those with a small camera. And then once you place it on the table, you will be able to see uh, that uh, footage from the object's point of view. And what was interesting is that um, those objects um, audio was mimicked by participants, and it's recorded. And both in uh, um, Korean and Japanese, we don't have you know masculine and feminine um, terms, and uh, but uh, we needed to decide the gender and the age. So that's what uh, that was an interesting experience to determine that. And. Um, so these are the activities I've been engaged with. You know, so 2009, with the launch of iPhone, that was impactful. And until then, we had interactive descriptions, and it was interesting well, with a description. It was uh, quite an interesting uh, art pieces. But now we have that kind of uh, spectacles in our hand. And um, so we 
couldn't make art pieces just by using descriptions. And then so when my uh, parent deceased, then I wasn't uh, enthusiastic in making art pieces. But uh, there was a dance, the performer, that was she, she Hiro. And, um, and I, saw in, I saw that performance, and it changed me. And to be able to make art pieces, and I had to work at the convenience stores, and which was difficult. But that changing the perspective, and some very interesting art pieces were born. So it was such a great lecture. And uh, I was under a pressure uh, then as well, and I used to teach the, the graphic design and so on. But what I was teaching and what I wanted to research were not matching. That's what's been bothering me. And I spent most of the time for teaching and preparing for my classes. And I wanted to utilize that time more. And so for instead of a graphic design or digital design, the creative computation was the class I started offering and to challenge in new things. And then now, uh, this is uh, something very important. And as you know, you know, we fell in the COVID situation and we couldn't travel in the same in Korea. And I tend to get anxious about a lot of things. And I am a very um, imaginative or, or creative in the worst case uh, scenarios. And I was uh, look, looking at the Instagram and Zachary Lieberman, uh, he was uploading beautiful sketches every day. And uh, so with this kind of ideas, you know, maybe I could do some. And also I made one. And uh, Zachary, you know, I know him by attending the workshop. And uh, Zachary, he responded to my message and said, I asked him, why are you able to make such beautiful things every day? But uh, just a li changing little by little is fine. And I re remember that. And I believe it's the, you know, I heard that the Takao-san does the same as well. But just modifying a little bit day by day is important. So continuing on those creative work is important. So that's uh, how I'm able to continue um, working on the creation. And how serious was I? So I was uh, determined to upload every day. But uh, I was hospitalized then. So in the hospital, you know, I was prepared everything to be to continue on this, and then my discharging timing was uh, delayed by a day. But uh, um, I just uh, managed to work with my notebook, and uh, I thought of an algorithm. And uh, after I went home, and the following day, I developed this on my computer and I uploaded it. So I continued in this kind of activities. And so I developed those drawings. And as a result, um, we got a whole year's worth. And uh, also I utilized a large um, display because Instagram is always in a small screen. And so this was a great chance and opportunity at the intern um, the airport I was invited to display and the reason why I wanted to do that was because well at um, another exhibition that the, we were going to exhibit I was going to exhibit on the you know white screen but uh, with this one I could utilize uh, that existing screen so I thought it this might be very interesting so I decided to participate and as you walk at the back, there is a media dedicated screen, and I could utilize that. But I, but that's the area uh, with the commercials being displayed, so the sh you know exposure was limited. And so, in the city, and where people are, and I. I wanted to see the people's responses. And also, one thing I was worried about is that um, the, you know, the modern display it provides the details and with the bright colors and 
realistic images were shown, but the my one is a 2D and flat, and the colors are quite uh, simple, and I wasn't sure how it would look like. And uh, someone came and said, and uh, so those you know bright commercials didn't really catch that person's eyes, but uh, he, this person saw my work, and it was uh, it drew drew that person's attention. So I, it, I started thinking about the significance of the meaning of the public art. They, the, uh, so in Singapore, there was a uh, the art festival. Uh, during the time of COVID, there were a lot of uh, application for festivals. And I was able to uh, gain the opportunity for a one-month residency. Uh, because of COVID, I was able to go there one week, and before that, I was uh, conversing online, and it was near e Equator because Singapore is a tropical country. And using the data of the weather, I have been creating uh, the project object beforehand. Uh, my I was intending to use the data of COVID. However, I was not able to use that. Therefore, I used the weather uh, forecast data for five years' work. Uh, this is the patterns for precipitations, how much rain poured, and this is the strength, velocity, and this one is the temperature, high temperature for five years' worth. And this is the showing the direction of the winds using various data. Rather than showing the accurate data, I have been creating the drawing. We call this data drawing to create an art piece. And because of uh, COVID-19, I was working within the metaverse area. And luckily, in order to advertise this event, uh, we were given the ch uh, opportunity to show our piece on this ceiling, the display in Singapore. This is a 10 square uh, display. And you can see that all the columns of the building you see a supercar which is sold like a vending machine and then when you actually want to purchase a car this vending machine like building will be moving and shuffling the cars and the cars will come down to you there's three displays and that's a 3d display therefore rather than trying to create a display itself. We wanted to create a 3D display that goes back and fro or up and down on the building itself. So that became a piece. And I would like to boast one thing. Usually when I'm creating a 3D effect as a display, I measure and to make it into a 3D dimension. However, for my case, I take a photograph of the construction and then make it a distorted way by Photoshop and then make a masking in order to find uh, the right effect. And this is currently, this was really like a, a drawing by hand. And I was not, I was dubious whether I could do that, but I was able to perform like that. I was very happy. In Netherlands, there was a festival called Demo Festival. And here during this festival, in 24 hours a day, you can use uh, 5,000 screens as a, a sign signage. And within those uh, displays, I was offered one area to show my signage. And this is a four-dimension signage, and it rotates. And with, there's small layer ones, too. And from here, uh, people can observe from the high area, high altitude, it's like in a department store. So I was able to create an object which fits this area and having different types of design on all four display. This was based on the topic of Valentine's. And this was an area where this is a cafe and a working space got in together. And I was intervening within this area, and I was thinking about my intervention that gave me an opportunity to think about that. And this time, when I heard CZBT is having a group work, I was intending to find out what topic I should find. However, I did not have to really think fully because this place is located in Shibuya, and Shibuya has a lot of display that I can use. 
this one I tested in 2010 and people dislike this object therefore I did not install this this is a 23rd floor building 20 90 meters high in Seoul this display was so big and looked like a brown wool And that wall had an LED being able to use it like a screen. What I wanted to do with the screen was not only using the digital screen with a distorted area, I wanted to add physicality. So I wanted to add an aspect like a paper and uh, from beneath the or from the back of the paper, I sent out light in order to find in order to send out some images. This is a public area. I wanted to listen to people's voices too. Therefore, I just ended up making a display of a very beautiful, pretty things. However, this was my work in a very large public space. This was in Queensland, uh, Queensland Tech University. We have been making a collaborations with London and South Korea and Australia to connect data and on spectators are going around the venues in order to enjoy. The projection is projected onto the wall. This time, I've been creating my art piece. And when we are creating piece anew, what is it that we should think about? That was my big questions. And I've been finding out uh, the word of Andre Lefebvre. He's been mentioning about constructions and architect architecture. He says that anything that could be created for architecture could be applied for a screen. So it's digital sinus. It should be revisited again because it is not just sold as it is. And it's not a, something that is run by people who have large capital. Digital signage could be created as for the use of public use. That came up to my mind. So that is why I started thinking that digital signage is a public land. According to how you understand digital signage, maybe my idea was take it as a public space. And right now, public signage is just showing advertisement, commercialism. However, I would like to retake that back into people's hand, the public. And this is my topic with the current workshop today for CCBT. The Blackpink, Lee San, Lisa. Uh, she celebrated her birthday and using the very high di di digital display maybe you have seen people sending in celebration word uh, for her and of course her fans has been paying a lot for the display to be displayed however people are utilizing this public space and paying and funding for this to be a reality and the urban city has been changed because of that and think of that it's not only about advertisement advertising some specific objective or a product. Mm, I'm thinking about people changing the scenery by them working on the display. What I would like to do with everybody is on the screen, uh, there's large companies uh, trying to voice in some word that inspire us to purchase. So I wanted to do something different from the standpoint of people. Maybe you might all know this, but I used to have a very small projection. However, all the world, you see a lot a vast amount of uh, digital signage all around the world. And I thought this could be used for the common good in a common space. Uh, this is one of the works done. And this is used by uh, collecting the noises of the Paris city. And the sound could be enjoyed by people who 
are walking too. And this one, this picture was taken yesterday. So when people come over to visit Shibuya, there's a very specific, unique rhythm that only Shibuya can have. I thought that could be used. In my memory, per station, I think that uh, in Japan, uh, the station has a different sound, music sounding. So by uh, the station, I could create a new music connectivity. And there's so much sound and music within the world. So I thought I could work without screens as well or without sound as well. So in this case, this is no longer a screen. It's a void, a vacant area. That's what I thought was. Uh, this is a, a art piece that I am inspired by these days uh, through Instagram. And this one has a very complete background color. And within the color of a sky, I select one color, and that could be the background color. And every 11.45, every day, looking at the synchronicity of the current real sky day and the screen color, maybe I might not be seeing any sky color anymore. And this was yesterday's sky color. It's so. Oh, so you decide one color to have it as a background. And then if it's going to be a camouflaging the whole real world as a color, I was imagining that could happen. So make it look transparent. There are various ways we can apply. And uh, so this is uh, so an example of uh, Nicolas Sasson. And um, now he, he is selling uh, this uh, uh, product. and. Now, on extension of that, you know, so these are the images of a shape of a window and a popping out of the screen. So the screen can be replaced with something else. So that's one way of uh, um, making a screen look uh, or making screen disappear. And the scenery, um, or it's, if it's a um, view, area of view of the city, and uh, there are some uh, smaller green areas, uh, small playgrounds, and that's where people rest and meet people, and uh, that's what I imagined. So in the screen can play that kind of role as well. And I couldn't find a perfect uh, image, so I have asked uh, Mirojani san to create this, but uh, I I couldn't come come up with a um, perfect picture, but uh, so without commercials, and the people can just uh, take a rest. But in Korea, in front of a building, there needs to be a sculpture, and the one percent of the construction fees it needs to be invested in the art. So, likewise, when we gen generate a digital signage. Let's say, you know, half an hour a day needs to be offered for public purposes. And it should be done voluntarily, ideally speaking, but that, that, that could be set by the law. And so let's say there is um, in a square. So imagine what's outside the square. So this is uh, Kitazo no Katsue's uh, uh, poetry. And uh, there's a repetitive words like inside, inside, inside. And uh, if we imagine this a smaller square is a screen, and we can work the reversely. We can imagine what's outside, and that's how we will be able to de develop our imagination. And lastly. So this was the, uh, my trigger. So the digital signage can be repositioned as an uh, um, opportunity for not just to show an advertisement. It could be a mirror of the city. It could be a window to show uh, something on extension. And also, it could be a portal to connect to the new world. So I would like to think of what the digital signage can do. Um, as uh, in our desire, and also we would like to give a, a thought in uh, as a you know public place. That this concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. So there, it, it was uh, quite. Uh, 
uh, two different extremes, and it, there are some commonalities as well. And so I would like to ask a question as well. For the common ground, you know, that's the concept that Toyoda, Mr. Toyoda is uh, proposing, and a non-human agent, the interference. And if that's assumed, and the, with the cell sun, uh, with the cell sun's art pieces, it's a more emotional, or there's a historical background included uh, for common ground. Does it include those emotions, like a non-human agent, instead of being determined by the environment? But uh, I don't know how to express, but in the past, Toyota san mentioned when you developed something uh, in Taiwan, the feng shui uh, you have uh, focused on, and uh, that's something you need to pay attention to, you said. But uh, something imaginary of a human, you know, does it interfere with uh, uh, the common ground, is my question? Well, when I started using digital uh, in the architecture, you know, started working on the architectures, and I love those uh, small villages or communities. And the architect, if he designs something on his own, and it turns out to be a Disneyland. So those are accumulation of a passion and emotion of uh, those residentials, residents, you know, it should be done much quicker with a computer. And uh, digital technology will be able to handle uh, descriptions, but only in a limited way. And uh, with that cluster, it's uh, difficult to develop, uh, um, depict a passion or a story residing in a space. But when the, it's combined with the channel, the experience and passion residing in that place, you know, that's what's, what we are feeling. And I believe we can recall them. And then maybe with the digital data, we should be able to do so. And uh, But something common we have as a society and it's something we share as a memory. And how do we trigger as a memory? And if it's uh, uh, something common, it will be more sacred. So that's what I mean by common ground. So common ground itself, it doesn't try to include the passion, but actually it's more like how to make that kind of passion and emotions of the place to be uh, recalled by the common place with the Harakenya, working with the Harakenya sound, you know, computational design. Um, I believe it tries to solve all the challenges within a computation, but um, the awareness of a human side, you know, that should be triggered. And instead of uh, focusing on the ultimate output, but um, as you said, that you know, you you know, trying to incorporate the human passion and emotion in there. It's something I did never imagined, so it was interesting. I have a question to Selsan. Well, in the signages in the Shibuya, there are so many of them. There are so many advertisements. And uh, but uh, as I saw um, different cases, you know, you, you don't have many opportunities to introduce your passion side. But as Toyota some men said, that like, uh, animation, you know, some uh, that's uh, informational space uh, with the physical world, the imaginations overlapping. And you know, so I, w I believe that could happen. And for when that kind of world to come true with the digital signage, um, what, what kind of possibilities do you see, you know, based on what Toyota-san mentioned, you know? Do you have any imaginations expanded, you know, how they could this could this digital signage could, could further expand? 
So when we utilize, when I present in the venues like this, what was good uh, talking about the digital, digital signage is that the, I, I felt like um, the digital signage is just uh, regarded as objects, but the, by interfering with the real world and the art pieces would become a part of environment. And as it happens, and it's possible, there's a possibility of changing humans. And with the humans' movement, it can change, you know, with the sensors and cameras and, you know, working on the detailed interactions. And, you know, with a much bigger area, it provides a much uh, very different um, uh, experience and uh, HCI is uh, m much more important, but that, you know we can think outside that box. And uh, so when we look at media art, and it's interesting to create your own as well. But uh, there are some spectators seeing the people watching the interactive media. So on the screen, but not only just uh, personal interactions, but we can be more unified and that, that kind of possibility can be expanded when, with the AI that can be achieved by one person and uh, so that we might be working more independently so for the common ground and a public place. I believe it, uh, I, it provided me a new opportunity to think about, you know, working as a community and together and, and so on. Thank you. We can entertain questions from the floor. <laughs> May I ask any question? So you mentioned about the computational design. Sorry, my microphone is echoing. So when you mentioned about media art and computational design, you really need to use and leverage your tool, and maybe I think you use your tool in an unconventional way. So it's my personal question. You mentioned about uh, using game engine. So why did you come to think of that? What triggered you to think like that? Oh, me? When I so at Tokyo University, at my uh, room, there is a person uh, from Miyake Oichiri, and we're working together in collaboration. And when conversing with him, I got the idea, the game AI. And the meta AI, character AI is included. It also has a special AI. It is lined up in levels hierarchical. And in real time, AI will be understanding and then try to find out the story. And it's the very well suitable in what we were doing. So I just immediately thought this was it. And the beam? what tool that we use in reality, uh, this is a tool uh, that really is uh, accurate in measuring. Uh, but uh, for the game engine, as far as you are very accurate in the very immediate surrounding environment, it's OK. And then the far you go away, uh, you, when you have a distance, then uh, the description gets blurred. When we. So when we are broadcasting one way, or else it's just an experience when sending out a communication by UHF, only one channel, when that was a time, it was OK. However, in this time, now at this point, we are to share the channel and to share the intercommunication. But everybody's specific uh, spec will be so different it is now becoming important to be able to handle different communication ways, different channels, and Game Engine has a technique already to do that, and I find a great potentiality there. 
So next question also goes to Toyota san. Listening to Seo san's presentation, as she mentioned about the uh, South Korea and Japanese culture in the 1980s. And there was many that was introduced. So anything impressive of what she mentioned? What is your impression about Seo san's presentation, Toyota san? The question goes to you. Well, all the things that she mentioned was so interesting, I wanted to take more time to listen to her. When she mentioned at the very end, she made a summary. She has been mentioning about media as a broadcasting. So it was one way, unilateral, but then now she wants to create it in a both way, two way uh, communications. That's already advancing. And this is just the trigger on the way. We might not be able to need any media anymore in the further end. So even if we do not really think that and we are not conscious about the media anymore, when people think that they are communicating with that, then it's okay. Maybe it's no longer an advertisement ceiling or a display. Maybe it could be just the interface environment. Uh, when the environment becomes an intercommunicationable interspace. By the way, um, my research center is called Interspace Research Center. And what she mentioned was right, came in just in the right center of my heart. Therefore, I think I really agree to what she said. Uh, the world is going to go parallel. Uh, no. So any questions from the floor? If you had any inspiration and wanted to make a feedback or a question, please raise your hand. Thank you very much for the presentation and the keynote. My question goes to Toyota-san. So you mentioned that uh, construction architecture uh, technology is 10 years later than the music industry. And you're using this place. And now you started saying that game engine could be used for architect design. So I think you're placing the value on people's experience. Uh, by context, uh, experience could be evaluated. And in the area of music, it could be a recurrent experience, and that has made the music advance. In the construction, by making assessment or evaluation, what kind of a parameter can be collected, or what would you like to collect from here on, or qualitatively, how are you going to be uh, evaluating the quality uh, quantitative data. If you have any objective to this or target, I would like you to share, please. Thank you. And your question was very difficult to answer. For instance, music and gaming industry, it's performed in a split second, and the environment is, is scaled in the 100 seconds, one second. And that in experience should be experienced by many and described in many. The construction is within the timing scale of some 10 years or more, much more longer. Therefore, we cannot evaluate it within the same platform. However, within the construction, I would like to work on based on AI. However, it's difficult to secure the data with the same granularity. The environment called interspace itself a human and non-human agent and a physical object. When uh, this becomes uh, the media, everything will be passing through this media, meaning that the uh, data will pass through and we are able to analyze the data. So uh, for the urban action, AI could be leveraged or else maybe uh, the temporal scaling, such as music and architects, it could be connected for the very first time because the environment will be uh, prepared. And we would like to go in that direction. Thank you. Uh, this is Shibata. My question goes to Sebo-san, please. Personally, 
I believe that Zionism is almost like a noise. It's something that I dislike. Oh, our office is called noise. Oh, excuse me on that. So the signage, when it gives out information, it's almost about giving out information. And then we ourselves are to receive the information. Uh, so we are receptive. And uh, when maybe the ones who are receiving the information could be trying to tone down and try to disregard the information that is given to us, not for us to accept. However, you are pressurizing for us to open up and receive the information usually. And for you, I think signage could be utilizing in a different way. For, ex for example, maybe the way of uh, expression from the signage side uh, are you interested in how they will be providing the information? Do you have interest in that? Yes, I was prepared in that direction. So let's say that uh, your desire could be all shown through the signage. If that is said by me, I think you will be very puzzled. Therefore, I have been thinking about that, and it's difficult to find out an answer by myself alone. Uh, therefore, within the teamwork that is going to be happening on the third day of workshop. I would like to think of you with everybody with affinity diagram to think about signage. And then I would like to set up a target in order to create a target, what to do with signage, signage. And I will be asking you all the things that you would like to write on the signage and write it out on the post-it post stickers. And that is going to be grouped into some categories that are similar. So by that, I would like to try to visualize what you would like to do for digital signage. Right now, I'm using digital signage as a canvas, but I'm not that used to it. Therefore, I try to use it as a place to accept it as an object. And this is going to be a common work with you, everybody. And I think that's going to be triggering us the way to think about the signage. And this is the best topic that CCBT could select. And this is a good topic that everybody here gathered in Shibuya could work for. So I don't know whichever group you will be grouped to third a day. But I think I would like you to be thinking about the direction and any idea that has been forgotten or left away because it was to be intended for a smaller uh, display. But you could be uh, expanding on that. Uh, may I ask one question to Seosan? Uh, what I really like is that, let's say, for the, you know, old all the drawing, like a check cross, you know, on the grid he used to draw. And uh, earlier phase of uh, media art, I love Jim Campbell. So it's a, such a low resolution uh, work. But Seosan, you know, you are quite focused on the low resolutions, but uh, in media, you know, we are trying to go the other side, the other direction. But uh, why are you so uh, kind of obsessed with the uh, low revolution, uh, resolutions? Yeah, it's a good point. Uh, what I am introducing is called the node box, node box. And the uh, Max and Visitor, and it, for text coding, you know, we couldn't, I couldn't overcome um, the obstacles, but with the node box, so people don't like the code. So notebox, you know, enabled an easier um, process. And with the COVID, I wasn't planning to make my own, but I was going to just uh, create samples to show my students. And because they couldn't go out, but the, you know, once they started coming to school, they could use it. So that was the, how I got the idea with a notebox. And uh, to teach notebooks, box, you know, I had this tool. But the notebooks is different from processing. 
and the vector images, um, you know, it's limited in uh, to the images. And in the meantime, it provided a great texture as well. So as you said, so that's why my work tend to be a low, low resolutions. And there's something interesting came out of that as well. And I think what's interesting about computational design is that, that this is not just a, a result, but the algorithm and a process uh, is a more very Im interesting. And then as a, not showing as a result, but uh, what people say, seeing my art pieces, uh, like uh, they can stare and they can be intrigued. So showing something realistic and colorful. And uh, I think it, it's a, it provides a different um, emotions uh, of showing my art pieces. And uh, but, uh, a lot of people said that it's a very interesting And uh, you know, being aware of the limitations I face, I can utilize that limitations and apply it to an interesting way of uh, creating. Okay, someone from the venue, please. Thank you very much for your lectures. My name is Yamaguchi. I have a question to Toyoda-san. In your lecture, you talked about common ground um, as a, a border of a, you know digital and physical. And in a digital world, like uh, we have a VR chat, and in digital, it enables you to experience uh, uh, a lot of things. And uh, like uh, with the smartphones as well, it provides the digital experiences as well. But um, but the, for the physical experience, and uh, to create something in the physical world. So after experiencing digital, and how do you perceive the physical experience in this time? Yeah, I might have mentioned it just briefly in the Modality channel in the physical world, you know, including conscious and non-conscious, it's enormous and infinite. But the digital modality channels are very limited still. And uh, pr principally, with, there are so many things we can't do. And so assuming that, but the, with the digital description, it enables us to edit and also to expand or tr transmit. In uh, human physiology, it didn't ex exist. So it, it's very effective to trigger um, sensation. So, but the numbers of channels are very limited. So if we try to just to conclude as is, it's not sufficient. But with the Vannam and the Daiwa House in the Shinagawa, at the, the, the townhouse, so we conducted a projection mapping. And in the older, um, there's a townhouse, and uh, there was uh, like a shoji sliding doors, and we opened that, and uh, there was a shadow uh, shown. But once you open it, you see the rains, and uh, in, and once you open the sliding door, you hear the sound of rain as well. So I did that. It's just a simply a projection mapping, but uh, walking on the tatami mat, and then opening the sliding door, you see that actual behavior, and you know the, uh, the townhouse and also the, uh, the smell and everything. So once you open it, you, you, everyone can feel the cold air coming in from outside. And uh, those augmented channels are enormous. So including conscious and unconscious, that you know, physical experience and sharing experience, you know, there's a, like a story only existing there, you know, that's what's assumed. So making a good use of that, I believe we will be able to trigger something. 
So how to develop something which is only experienced by your, your brain? And so this is about how to derive those experiences in someone else's brain. So I think there's so much more know-how of combining digital and physical. Thank you very much. It was very interesting. My name is Umeda, and I have a question. Well, you talked about media art, and and it, it's uh, used in a different way to the original intention. And both of you utilizing a city as a tool in your creations and with the post-COVID and with COVID, and the role the urban cities play is changing, I think. And um, in the urban cities as a tool, how is the role changing? I'd like to know that. Are you addressing the question to both of us? Yes, OK. OK, I'll go first then. I am interested in urban cities because, you know, I'm assuming it's a very complex and we won't be able to describe everything and not everyone perceives with the same values and standards. So like, let assume, you know, we are kind of sick of and experiencing fatigue with the COVID like, uh, you know, having a party via Zoom and then is everyone's tired of that. And so everyone needs to have a different channels and those factors need to have a need to flow in. And for the architectures as well, the modernism, you know, in the 20th century, it was more inclined for the purifications, how precisely a human would design. And the designer wouldn't just broadcast one way, but as a creation is the 70%, and the users would make it, you know, they would apply uh, with the remaining 30%, and the architecture would, do, you know, need to do the same. So, giver and take us and I believe it's going to happen gradually and uh, another in urban city that's happening already inevitably and that's what makes it interesting so it might be a you know something in a much smaller scale but uh, you know the scramble the intersections with lots of people you know so the reason why I'm interested in uh, computational design is that uh, because it's a developing a process, not the result. And um, with the, everyone is following the invisible rules. So when the traffic lights turn red, no, you don't cross the uh, street, right? It's the other way around. So when it turns green and you cross the street, when it turns red, you stop. And when someone comes in front of you, you try to avoid that person. So unconsciously, there are so many rules. And so it's enjoyable to see that happening in urban cities. And I talked about rhythm as well. And with everyone's movement and you know relationships and everyone's got different rhythms. So like an orchestra, there is a level of a human's movement and the cars and systems rhythm. And in my work, is shown as a signage, and it creates a joint rhythm. So those relationship uh, uh, is uh, very fun for me to continue in, to be in that relationship. That's how I perceive urban cities. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Yes, I see one hand up. This will be our last question. Sorry, I'm questioning twice. This is a question to Toyoda-san. So you scan the space, and you would like to use the data within the building more, and building holds various information, and you would like to use this data high accuracy. 
and you call this to create uh, uh, data storage for the non-human agent. And when you're designing architect and building with that, I think there's many things that you would like to discard or ob obsolete. For instance, there could be a guide for people with disability of visualize, and those are braille blocks that is aligned on a streetway. Maybe that is no longer needed, or maybe wheelchairs. I don't know about wheelchairs, but then there's many things within the society currently now existing, but could go away going forward. And I, uh, so are you interested in any, anything to be uh, preserved within the next uh, world that you are envisioning? When the physical substance is going to be replaced by digital information and that could be taken away or be discarded, but I don't believe that much. For instance, I'm asked frequently to visualize the smart city. However, it does not change much from current day. Let's say the Uber is and threatening uh, the positioning of a taxi very much. Let's see taxi, whether they have demand or not, there could be a hundred taxi uh, that is parked around to wait for uh, the users. And for you, Ubers, maybe Uber could be uh, ordered to increase the number of drivers or decrease of the numbers of drivers. So just by providing the data, the maneuver of Uber could be done. And let's say the new world is now maneuvered by information. And Uber uh, is not to be changing the concept of the taxi itself. Therefore, it's not currently much changing. For instance, like uh, agriculture, maybe the primary agriculture, secondary agriculture, it's not going to be changing much. It's just not replacing. It is just expanding outwards. So um, I myself feel that uh, the things will not dramatically change. As an architect and designer of buildings, I do want a world that uh, p the world of building will be drastically changing. However, it seems like, to my ob observation, the reality does not change so much with digitalization. Thank you. And now it seems to be nearing our end time. So people who are participating within the camp, Seosan is working for uh, tomorrow's workshop. So you will be meeting her tomorrow. And this is only day one for the first camp, but you had a lot of information. And for those who are participating through YouTube, we are sending you a questionnaire link through the YouTube. So we will be very happy for you to uh, answer this questionnaire and we would like to use it as a reference for improving ourselves. And for the speakers, thank you very much. A great round of applause to our two great speakers. Thank you very much. And for the distributors and regarding the camp itself, this is day one and we have four more days. And from the 24th, we haven't grouped you yet. However, from 24th to 30th, we're going to be having an exhibition for your outputs. Therefore, please come over to visit us. And thank you. We are over time. However, thank you very much for your participation. Thank you, people, for watching through the YouTube.